Right, okay, off we go. so we are doing an explanation of, oh, wrong way, explanation of why the Doppler effect is useful. First example, policeman with the radar gun checking your speed. So here we go. Situation one, they actually fire a light at you and you're at rest. Situation two, they fire a light at you, you're moving away. Situation three, they fire a light at you, you're moving toward them. The light is microwave, so if I turn this on and point at you and click, yes, I'm actually shooting microwaves at you. Not enough to cook you, don't worry. But it does fire microwaves. So, you can draw them, that's the ray, you can also draw it as a wave front. So, if we were to draw it as a wave front, it's heading out in this direction until it hits your car. If you're moving away, the same thing happens until it hits your car. Or if you're moving toward, the same thing happens until it hits your car. What am I showing with the spacing there? It's the same. Wavelength. 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 And they're the same. Now, what happens when the wave hits your car in any of the situations? The car. Tar. Tar always happens. However, as far as the policeman's concerned, do they know anything about your speed based on what's happened so far? No. They shine light at you. That's great. But they don't know anything about your speed, so which one of those three actually has to happen for them to know anything? Reflection. reflection. Yeah, you've got to have some reflection. Now, in reality, policemen often line up in their car like this, or sometimes even get out of their car and they have a little sight, and they really aim where they're firing the radar gun. Why do they have to aim? Why do you have to be careful to aim your radar gun? David? Because the light might reflect off the road. That's true. Because it really has to hit the car? It does have to hit the car, and these are microwaves. Compared to visible light, microwaves have a bigger, a small wavelength. Look up PRT2. Compared to visible light, microwaves big, have a big, big wavelength. If they have a big wavelength, what does that mean about their diffraction? Big. Bigger big. diffraction. Yes, this also, this is on the quiz, on the quiz, excuse me. Big diffraction. So, what does that actually mean though? Big diffraction means the wave does what? Spreads, out. Spreads out. So if you're just loosely like, you know, oh, the wave good. spreads out, you don't know what it's hitting. So you really have to aim carefully to help compensate for that diffraction. So cool, we're going to have reflection here. Now, it hits and it bounces back. In this case, when the car is at rest, some of that light will hit and actually it tends to reflect back. They tend to aim for right here. We'll talk about that in a second. But some of it bounces back this way. In this scenario, what will the wavelength look like for the reflected wave? Same. 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 It's not moving. It actually bounces them back the same. And in fact, the spacing will be the same. So for this case, if they sent 10 to the 10th hertz, they actually receive 10 to the 10th hertz. Now, if you looked at the bonus on the homework, this is programmed to do a little equation, nothing too big. If it sends and receives the same signal, it just displays on here zero. It's not moving. What do they aim at on a car? Does anyone know? The front. Where on the front? Not just the front. They try to aim at something in particular. The license the plate. The license plate. Aim at the license plate. I think that's spelled right. You know why? Because it's like the front most part of the car. It's perpendicular. Yes, it's in the front, of course. And it's perpendicular. And it's flat. A nice flat surface. You want a reflection. If you go in the morning to get ready and you want it, you're going to look at your reflection, which mirror are you going to choose? The flat, the one that's bowed out one way or bowed another way, of course, the flat mirror. A nice reflection. Number two, they specifically make license plates so that when you shine a light on them at night, you notice this. How do they look? They're like highly reflected. They're shining. So it's actually... Is that why they reflected. made them shiny and reflective? What's that? Is that why they made them like reflective? Yeah. They want now if visible light reflects off it well, so will microwaves. You remember what we did with the remote here? When we aimed it at the mirror and it reflected it to the sensor and it turned the freeze on and off? I might have not been. Yes? 
You might yeah. have to You guys are going to So, any of these, they ref if visible light reflects off it well, any light will. Okay, so, highly reflective, there you go. Good done. Next scenario. This one, the car is driving away from you. So, when the light hits this car, it does reflect. However, do the waves hit it as frequently as they were up here, or is it kind of running away from them? Not as much. You see here that like it's sending them out, but this is trying to run away from them, which means it sends them back as frequently, or less, or more frequently. Less. Less. You're going to get a bigger or smaller wavelength? Wait, can you say that again? I was... Yeah. The waves are sent out, so every, the numbers are crazy, but just imagine every second a new, a new crest hits your car. If your car is driving away from it, that means that the first one hits, the next one would take a second to hit it, but you actually drive away, so it has to go a little farther, so it's going to take longer, which means this reflects them back less frequently, and you're going to get a bigger wavelength coming back. Because it's like, re it's reflecting the waves in terms of less frequently. Yes. It's hitting the car less frequently, so the reflections are coming back less frequently. And in fact, this is sending 10 to the 10th hertz, but it is receiving more or less. And this is frequency now. We drew a bigger wavelength, but it's receiving something less than 10 to the 10th hertz. This is what we call, if it's light, a... What kind of shift? No, D struck. No. Red shift or blue shift? Oh, red shift. Red. This is a red shift, and we call it a red shift because red is the lower frequency color. Blue shift is for higher frequency. It's not actually red or blue. All this is here. It's actually microwaves, which just doesn't have a color. But red shift is whenever you're going to that lower frequency. Now here's a trick to remember it. Somebody said this from your class, I think. It was me. Yeah, that was a great trick. I think what people was the remember trick? that. The tail lights on a car, the tail lights here, so if this car is going away from you, oh, you're looking yeah. at the tail lights, tail lights are red. So when something's moving away, you're going to get a red shift. That's you, so by the way, smart. that is smart, isn't it? I didn't, your I didn't eyeballs think of it. Herman did. Herman I, Herman and he credit. told me in the ninth grade and I always remember it. That's great. You see the red tail lights, it's moving away from you, that's a red shift. You're not actually, your eyeballs can't actually detect Doppler effect. Your eyes can't do that. Your ears can tell, but your eyes can't. But it is true. Now, the final scenario, which is you're moving toward. So are you going to intercept the waves more or less frequently than they're actually being sent? More. more. You're going to actually hit them ahead of time. So you will get a reflection here. And in fact, it'll send back waves of a... Smaller wavelength bigger and a bigger frequency. That's right. So, sent is still, the radar gun doesn't care, it doesn't change, 10 to the 10th, yeah, but it receives something greater, greater than 10 to the 10th hertz. This is what you call a blue shift. And the way to remember this too, sometimes, tends to probably be maybe some of your friends, People soup up their cars and they don't put regular headlights, they kind of put those bluish headlights on there. So when the car is coming towards you, you see kind of that blue light, that's the blue shift. Just a way to remember. Wait, then how do you know that what it's receiving is like more than that? What happens is this sends a new, let's just, instead of saying 10 to the 10th, oh, we'll call oh, it 1. Oh, that makes sense, because like, compared to the black. Yes. The radar gun has to both know what it's sending and receive. And it compares the two. If they compare the same, you're not moving. If they compare that the received is less, you're moving away. If they compare that the received is greater frequency, you're moving toward. And it's actually pretty easy math. The amount greater can be turned into a speed. The amount less can be turned into a speed. How far of like a range does that like connect to tech? It can go pretty far, but you know, you need line of sight, really. So, basically, if you get far enough, there are going to be other things in the way or other cars. And generally speaking, a, an officer is looking to get you from down the road. So if you're driving here, they're looking to get you where they're as lined up with you as possible. Right. And 
normally what people do is they're driving along, speeding, 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 and then when they're right on top of the policeman, they're like, uh-oh. Yeah, I always do that. It's too late. Because, like, my mom always says, like, when we're driving, she's like, she's like, slow down. And I'm like, but there's other people going faster than me. But she's like, no, all they need is, like, one person because, like, they're not, like, looking at other people. They have a radar gun. They're looking at your car. They're going to aim. If yeah. other people, they're going to aim. Yeah. That's true. And, it, yeah, the argument doesn't work. The other thing is, will you ever see a policeman as you're passing him standing over here aiming at your car? Mm -mm. Doesn't Why? work that. Can't, you have to aim Are you police. moving toward them as you're going past here? No. Are you moving away? Away. Right now, right as you're going past, you're moving. are you you're moving, moving toward or away from them? Relative to them. You're Relative to them? You're, you're going this way. You're really not changing your distance. So at that instant, it's going to say zero. Obviously, you're not going zero. It's a waste. It's like seeing, here's the pitcher. Here's the catcher. You're checking how fast the person throws. They never stand over here. It wouldn't work. You have to stand here or here. You have to line up with that so that you can get this effect to happen. So that's Doppler effect. Now, what you'll see, I keep going the wrong way, what you'll see right here is basic scenarios. What's the frequency going to say if the car is? It's pretty easy. One, two, three, let's go. What will the frequency be compared to? So this is compared to the source, or the actual radar gun itself. So compared to the actual radar gun itself or the source, a stationary car, how will the frequency appear? That it remains the same. Yeah, the frequency remains the same. You don't notice any frequency shift. No Doppler effect. How about if the car is moving toward the officer? Increasing. Increase. Frequency, so you could have a higher frequency, aka a blue shift. How about if you were accelerating away? And notice here the ING, accelerating away from the officer. See, Baz, what are you going to notice? Yeah, accelerating, you're going to get not just a decrease, but a decrease in. Frequency. Oh, because it's like constantly going to be. It's like right, because the speed is changing. Decreasing. That's right. So notice what we mentioned before. Remember with the buzzer above our heads. When I when I spin it real slow, you barely notice. But you spin it fast a lot. In the homework, like I don't understand how you gave us an example with a woman like skydiving. How does that? Oh well, it's the same Free fall. distance, I guess. Yeah. Free fall is she's accelerating toward the siren. Okay, yeah, I was like, I was like, that does, I thought it would like remain the same because like, I was thinking, Real well, life I was thinking diving. relative like, just like horizontal, not vertical. Well, muscles. what it is, if the siren's here, right. and she's coming toward it's it. It's still the same thing. Still, it'd be that. the same as turning it this way. Okay. In real life, a skydiver wouldn't notice a changing because you only free fall for a couple seconds and then you turn to constant velocity, right. so it would just be higher. But if she's really free falling, no right. air. You're going to increase as it goes. Okay. Okay, over here, moving away from the officer. Decrease? Yeah, it's going to be a lower frequency, a.k.a. a red shift. Can I say decrease on that, or do What's I that? have to say, like, lower frequency? Usually this is multiple of choice, but you can say decreased frequency. I don't care. Okay. And the last one, of course, accelerating towards, so the ing is going to be Increasing. an increase ing frequency. Now you notice what we did up here as we said, here is the motion, what happens to the frequency. The other way you can ask this is like this example, which is, here is the frequency, what sort of motion does that imply? This of course is the way to use this. Here's a cool example. Have you guys heard of extrasolar planets? Planets around other stars than our own. Yeah. Yeah. There have been over a thousand discovered at the moment, and the expectation is that there are billions upon billions. 
There's the expectation is our solar system is not unique oh, that way, sure. that there'll be How planets all over the place. That motivates people to say there must be aliens, although it it's to. a tougher oh. question How can, that. like, humans be so, like, egotistic to think that we're, like, That's the only stupid. things in the universe? Well, listen, you gotta be scientific about it. What if there's another, like, world? I feel like there is. Could be. Yeah, isn't that like, there really has weird? to be. Could be. There has to be. David, do you Check think Check this so? out. Do you think that they're aliens? David, we have a lot of faith in you. Do you think they're aliens? I feel like David would know. I don't think there could be life on other planets. Like that's no, no, like, no. Do David do says it. Write it. It's true. David is no right. Water, David doesn't just start writing like writes on the quiz. Another Earth with like another What's seven there billion people. Planet to Earth? The Probably trouble like, is, and I actually did some work on this in grad school a little bit actually, and uh, the trouble is that you need to find places where life, as far as we know it, can actually survive. That's not as easy as it sounds. And they wouldn't be happening at the same time. And that's another issue, but who knows. Anyway, let's go back to this. Here. Here's the example. This is the sun. The sun has its crown on. Here is the earth. This. The earth, of course, it's just this little tape. The earth orbits around the sun, right? So here's our nice heliocentric model. Great. Okay, now, we need somebody out there passing it between their hands. So, how does the sun keep the Earth in its orbit? What is it pulling on it with? What Gravity. force? Gravity. Gravity, right? Does the Earth pull back on the sun? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Who pulls harder, the Earth on the sun or the sun on the Earth? The sun on the Earth. Same. Same! This is the same as which hits harder, the truck on the bug or the bug on the truck? The same, Newton's third wrong. law. The question always, like, the yeah, same. That question always got me wrong. However, that always screwed me up. they don't behave the same. Why does the Earth look like it's doing this, and you don't really notice anything from the Sun? They're pulling so on each other the same, but the Earth has much less mass. So it accelerates more. So you call it orbiting. But the reality is, the Earth is still pulling on the Sun. So as the Earth moves this way, it actually does tug the Sun a little bit. And as it goes around, it actually does tug the sun a little bit. The sun actually does move a little bit. Now, if you have a bigger, more massive planet than the sun, let's say Jupiter, Jupiter, as it goes around, has even a bigger effect. As Jupiter goes around, it actually does cause the sun to move around a bit toward it. And so here is a graphic of that. Is there anything... This is actually what's happening. This is more dramatic than what's happening. The sizing and the scale and all that is not right. But this is actually happening. What's up? So why do the sun and the earth have equal gravity on each other? I'm still trying to get the... Newton's third law. Because of the video, we'll do it later. <laughs> okay. For now, just call it Newton's third. We'll talk about it later. But I have a question. Is there any like possible like force that would like... That could allow like the gravitational pull between them like to become imbalanced? Well, there are reasons it could be imbalanced, but the... To, like, the, knock the it Newton's, off of its, like... Oh, to change the orbit. Yeah. There's something else has to get involved in order for that to happen, and yes, that's possible. But again, just out of efficiency, we can come back to that later. Okay, now, come to this. Can you see 